Hi guys, Hedia here, and today I want to go over a video showcasing some of the more popular commands for the Bash shell for Linux and Unix systems. I want to make this video in order to make working with the terminal and the command line interface a little easier. So let's get started. The first one, the first command I want to go over is the ls command, which stands for the list directory command. And what this one is that it allows you to view quickly all the files within a specified directory. So in this case, I'm in the directory documents forward slash example. And if I want to see what files this directory contained, I type in ls. And it says that I have four text files, example one, example two, example three, and example five. And the ls command has a couple of switches. So if I type in ls-l, this shows the same files as above, but it also shows me their permissions. So it says RW for the user permission, it can read and write by the user. RW for the group, so the group can read and write on this file. And then just R permissions for the guest, so any guest could only read the file. And that's true for all of them. I'll go over how to change these permissions when I go over the chmod command. Anyways, in addition to ls, well, I mean, okay, you can also see hidden files using the ls command by using the ls-al switch. And doing this will show us a couple of extra hidden files which have different permissions. And these are dot and double dot files. They're not visible normally, so if you were to go into that directory, you wouldn't be able to see them. But anyways, the next command I want to go over is the cd or change directory command. And what this will allow you to do is it allows you to change the directory you're in. So let's say I want to go over, go back to the home directory, the Hedia directory. I type in cd and now I'm back to my main directory. And if I were to go to cd downloads, I'm now in the downloads directory which has nothing right now. But say from the downloads directory, I want to go back to downloads, I mean documents for slash example. Now if I were to just do that, cd documents if I can spell for slash example it gives me an error because the documents folder and the example folder inside it are not inside downloads so to do that I have to list the directory out from root so if I were to just type in root this to type in root is just the forward slash so cd forward slash is the root command However, because I do not have root permissions right now, it just takes me back to the Hedia. But, hang on. Who am I? Okay, I'm still Hedia, so I'm not root. I don't know why it's giving me... Okay, I'm back. Because there was sh showing me this uh, forward slash instead of the tilde, so I'm guessing it was going from root. Okay, so it was in the root command. Actually, hang on. Let me just try that one more time. Okay, I'm in the root, I'm in my root folder. So just typing in cd forward slash puts me in my root folder. So from here, I can see I have the home folder. So cd root home root hedia root documents slash root example. And now I'm in the, I'm back again in the documents forward slash example directory and let's just say I want another way of finding out which directory you're in is just to type in the PW PWD and this basically shows you exactly where you are so in this case I'm in the root home Hedia documents examples folder directory I'll use folder and directory interchangeably but yeah this is exactly where I am so just type in PWD in case you ever want to go and find out where you are PWD stands for print working directory, so if you're ever lost in a terminal, just type in PWD and you'll know where you are. And that also covers the CD command. Um, the other one I want to go over are the make directory command. So if you want to make, create a directory, right now this directory only has four files, there's no directories inside of example. So if you want to make another directory inside it, type in the make dir command and then the name of the directory so make dir 
example dir. And now if I type in ls, it shows that I have my four files, but I also have the directory, example dir. And how do I know it's a directory? Well, for once the same color and font as the uh, directories here, but you can always test it by going into cd. And well, you can't cd into a file because it says it's not a directory, but if you cd into example dir, I can get in and there's nothing inside it. And if you want to just go back one directory, type in cd double dash, I mean double dot, and it will take you back one direct, like it will take back one level. So we're now back in the example directory. And just like we can create directories, we can also remove them as well as files by typing in the rm command and then the dash r switch. And let's say we want to remove example three. We type that in ls and as you can see example 3 is now deleted from our directory and the same process also works for the direct directories as well so rm dash r example dir and when I type in ls again the directory is also gone and if I try to cd into it it says there's no such file or directory because that folder directory has been deleted. And in case the dash r switch doesn't work, you can always do rm dash rf to force remove it. And in this case, example five. And this also deletes it, the file example five. And it does this. Normally you would have trouble with a directory if a directory has some contents inside it. So if you were to type in dash r, it would not be able to remove it because it's not an empty directory. So I'm actually going to show you that after I go over the cat file, how that works. Or actually the touch file, because you can use touch to create content as well. But with the cat command and the touch command allows you to create files. The touch is more, uh, let me go over touch really quick. Touch, example, actually let me let me just do this. Make directory, eDir, so we now have the e directory, cd into it, and there's nothing inside it. So let's say we want to create a file. Touch, example, d. Now when we type in ls, there is a file called example d. And let's just say we want to add something into it. We can do that by typing in nano, which is our text editor of choice right now. And then typing in the name of the file. And let's say here is some content, control o and then press enter to save it, and then control X. LS, it's still there. And if we type in the less command, and then type in the name of the file, it says that here is some content is inside the file. Basically what the less command does is it quickly shows you the contents of a file. And if you want to exit this less command, just type in Q, and you're back out here. You can also type in the cat command to view the contents of a file. And as you can see, it says here is some content because that's all that's inside example D. So now if I were to CD back one position, I can see example one and two as well as the eater. So let's try removing it. RM dash R eater. Huh, it's gone. Okay, so I guess I was wrong. I guess the force command is... Okay, maybe if I was... If I had that file open, yeah, then I would have to force it. But if there's ever an error, just type in dash RF instead of dash R after the RM command, and that should forcefully remove anything. And 
Okay, let me make the directory again. Either. Okay, and let me show you the move command, which allows you to move a file or directory to another directory. So to do that, you type in mv, and then I will type in example one. Okay, this is a way I can copy a file. So the contents of example, actually let's do example two, that one's a lot shorter. Example two to example three. And if I type in ls, now there, okay, I didn't copy it, I just changed the name to example three. Hmm. Uh, just give me one sec. Um, let's see how to move. Alright, so I guess to move this, I'll type in MV example 3 to either. And now I can see, say, ah, now it says that there's only example 1 and either in my folder. So if I were to CD to either, example 3 is inside E directory or either directory. And if I were to move this back up, MV example three example. No, all that did was change it. Alright, hang on, I think I know. I, I probably have to do it from root again. So, either mv example, now let's change that back to example 2, and then let's move it. Example 2, home, hedia, documents. Example. Now, if I type in ls, the edor directory is empty. So, if I go back one and ls, we have example two there as well as the e directory. Sorry about that. So, that is how you can move files in and out of a directory. Okay, I will admit it's not the most efficient way to move a file one directory up by having to type it all the way from root. I know there is a more efficient way to do it, but for this one I just wanted to go over this really quickly. And beyond that, let's go over the echo command. The echo command basically prints out any string in front of it, so echo, hello, how are you? And it prints out what I typed in, hello, how are you? Now this seems very simple, but the echo command can be very useful when you're using it inside bash scripts. So if you're writing an entire script, echo basically outputs strings, so it's very useful in there. And basically you can combine this with other commands, so what you can do is you could pipe the contents. Actually let me go over that. Um, the cat command can show you what's inside it. A file so cat example 2 shows that I have hello how are you in separate lines so if I were to pipe that into echo I think this should work or I probably have this wrong no, I probably had that wrong echo cat example 2 no, that didn't work. I know you can pipe it in.
You know, I'm not going to go over too many advanced examples. I just want to go over the uh, commands really quickly. I'll make a separate video on how to do this much more uh, in much more detail later on. But yeah, echo you can just use it to output some string. Another command I want to go over is the grep command. So grep hello example 2 and it prints out or rather it finds the word hello in example 2. Grep can be used to search for certain strings or content from a file. So say you had a file that has 1 million lines of code or 1 million lines of just text. If you want to type in one sentence, type in grep, the sentence you want to find and then the file to see if it has it and then it'll output if it output that sentence if it finds it. So grep is a very convenient way to search for uh, to search for content within files and directories. Grep is act grep like the echo command is actually very advanced. I'm not going to go over how all of it works. I'm just going to go over it just, you know, simply. Oh, back to the echo command. If you just type in echo star No, sorry, not echo star, echo space star. If I can spell correctly. That is another way of using the ls command. Basically, it will print out all the contents of your folder. But unlike the ls command, it does not highlight either as a... It basically shows them all in white text. Either is not blue like it is up here. And that's because it cannot differentiate between a file and a directory. It's simply outputting the names of the content that it's that it sees. As for grep, grep is actually very advanced. So I'm going to make a separate video on grep later on. But anyways, uh, let's move on to the cat command. So I went over cat briefly. So cat example 2 will out show the contents of a file. Let me show the contents of example 1. Cat example 1 and it is a huge list of numbers. A lot of them actually. Now let's just say I want to create a separate file called example 3. Not the one I had but a new one. To do that I can do Basically, the way the cat command works is, uh, let me just show you, cat, now you have to use this arrow and then type in example 3. The arrow tells it to create a file rather than searching for it, so if I type this in, it, uh, it looks like it's doing something, but let me just cancel out of it and then type in ls. And now you can see it has example 3. If I type in cat example 3, there's nothing inside it. Now say I wanted to copy the contents of one file to another. To do that, let's just say I want to copy the contents of example 2 into example 3. Cat example 2 again has these four lines. So if I type in cat example 2, and two arrows to example 3 it will copy the contents of example 2 to example 3 so if I type in cat example 3 now it has the same contents example 2 had and one more thing you can do with a cat command is cat dash n example 1 to show the number basically to show the lines of content so it's the same as doing cat example one over here but this time it shows me there are 31 lines of content so there are 31 lines here so typing in the dash n will show you the lines of content that are available in here and just to briefly go over the cat command is just give me a sec do I not have notes on the cat command? Yeah, be, okay, there it is. The cat command is one, the more one of the more versatile, versatile, ah, 
Versile. Ver wow, can I really not say that? Versatile. Versatile commands and serves three main functions. It can display content from a file. It can combine copies of them. Kind of similar to how I did it here. And it can create new ones. So, you know, create new files. That's basically the bit that's basically the gist of it. Now let me go over one Okay, let me go over a two for one. I tried to use pipe earlier and it fails. What pipe is, you just type in this uh, upward line. It's to the right of your right bracket on the keyboard. It's above the backslash. Like if you type in shift backslash, it cr it's the line. What pipe does is it takes the output of one command and passes it into another. So, okay. Cat example two pipe less. Okay, I know this is a bit of a bad example, but it takes the output from cat and puts it into the less command. So that's showing me on the less screen here. Um, another one would be cat, not cat. Well, I mean, it would be cat. Hang on, let me just look up in a quick example on how to use the pipe command with a good example, not a bad one that I have written down. I want a good one. Well, I mean, I do have a good one written down, it's just, it's a little, it's like a two for one, it's a little more advanced. Because it also goes over the sort command at the same time. Um, just give me a sec here. God, can it just not come up with a simple example? Without typing in. Alright, well, let me just do this. LS. Alright. So LS shows in either example 1, 2, and 3. So LS, let me pipe this output, this output right here, these four lo these four words into cat example four. Sorry, I, I typed that wrong. LS cat arrow example four. Or I, honestly, I should have just used touch example four, but. Anyways, now if I type in ls, there's example 4, and if I type in cat example 4, it has the ls output including itself for some reason into example 4. Which I think is kind of weird, because when I typed in ls... I typed in ls before it created example 4, so why is example 4 here? You know what, I don't know, but let's just go with it. Yeah, so example 4, the contents of this file are the output of the ls command. So the output of this command was piped into cat as it created example 4. So if I wanted any output from a directory, or if I just wanted any output from a terminal command, I can just pipe it into another command. And you know, you can even chain pipes, so I could add like another pipe and then do something else, another pipe, do something else. That's how you can write more ex complex commands. Just one second here, let me get a sip of tea. <coughs> All right, so, where was I going with this? All right. Uh, before I go over the sort command, let me go over the head and tail command. So cat example 1 again, it's massive, 31 lines. If I wanted the first 10 lines of any file, I would type in head example 1, and it shows me the first 10 lines of content. Whereas if I wanted the last 10 lines of content, I would type in tail, the file name, and now it's showing me the last 10 lines of content from that file. Alright, so now for the sort one. Um, I 
Actually, hang on. The sword one doesn't really deal with example, but... Well, I can try it, but, but let's see. ls forward slash user forward slash bin is massive and it shows me all the files I have in the user bin, which actually you don't want to go over too much. Let me clear that. Um, but anyways, ls user slash bin, I'll just deal with it. Pipe that into the sort dash f switch. And the dash F switch is, it will sort it alphabetically, and then pipe that into less. If I can type it right, ls slash user slash bin, the first forward slash is important, that's the root. Always remember that. Sort dash F, sort, I mean, pipe into less. And now it literally took all the contents off that and piped it in and it's now showing me in less in alphabetical order all the contents of my user bin folder I'm not gonna go too far into it but it, it's pretty big and I can just type in the Q letter and then just get, takes me out of less and the sort let's see where my notes for it the sort command okay let me use sort command with the uh, example one so example one sort sorry you have to use this with a pipe command so Example one sort dash n. Really? All right, cat. Example one pipe to sort dash n, and now it sorts all the content of example one by numerical order. Dash n will do it by the numerical order, by integer. As long as there are no decimals, it doesn't matter which one I use, but dash n orders it by integer, dash h orders it by human numerical order, and then dash g does it by overall numerical order, dash f is alphabetical order, dash r is random, so cat example 1 sort dash r now sorts all the contents of this file randomly and dash m sort dash m sorts it by month if dates are available and then dash capital v sorts it by version if there are any files in a directory that you need to sort because you don't necessarily need to sort the contents of a file it could be the contents of a directory too so actually cd Either. Oh yeah, there's nothing inside. I'm not gonna go over that, it's kinda a lot of work, but yeah, that's how you can use the sort command and also the pipe command via example. And you can also use the locate command. If you type in locate and then type in the name of any program, it will find every instance, every file that is named, that has that name. Um, okay, hang on. Locate Brave, for instance. And this will show me every file or folder that has the word Brave. Because I have the Brave browser on my machine. On my machine. So, locate... No, root is literally too massive. Um, yeah, locate will give me a lot of output, so I can't really think of anything that will give me a short list. Locate sums. 
Yeah, that's still a massive list. I want to show you something that's like a small list. But basically, if you're if you don't know where something is in your computer, for example, locate example. Well, this shows me every time the word example shows up, but yeah, see home hedia documents example is here. That's the first thing that popped up. But then there's a lot, a lot more. So let me just clear that out. But yeah, you can use locate the locate one, the locate command to find anything. It is very uh, abstract. There's another version of locate called type, but this is more for programs. So if I type in type bash. It will show me okay this one will just show me where the bash command is located I mean the bash program is located it's located in my user bin bash folder and if I typed in type brave sorry I guess brave is a little I think it has, type has to be very exact type brave browser yeah brave browser is in the user bin brave browser and then if I type in type Python yeah, again, it's in the uh, user bin browser. Locate will show you every instance where Python is mentioned, whereas if you just want to know where the program is, you just type in type. And that'll do it much easier. Uh, let me see. L ls-l. Okay, let me go with the uh, chmod command really quick. For the chmod, I would type in chmod777 example, so the name of the file or directory, example 4, and then if I type in ls-l, you can see example 4 has different permissions, rather than just rw and r, it has rwx, like it has full permissions, anyone can modify the file, myself, my user, my group, as well as any other user. And you can do this with the directory as well, so chmod 43 is it 421 or well let's try 421. I don't think 421 is any uh because I know there's a whole list on how you do this but let me just go over it really quickly. Okay, so they have been changed. It can now only read for the user, write for the group, and then one basically it can execute as guest. The X here means execute. So this is a very weird one, 421. If you do seven seven okay, so what seven 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 here is for all three of these. 7 basically gives you RWX, and then the second 7 gives you RWX for the uh, group, and then the last 7 gives you RWX for the guest. Whereas 4 to 1, 4 would be read, 2 would be write, and then 1 would be execute. And the way you can just give them full permissions is. 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7, so that would be read, write, and execute. Basically that's how chmod works. Um, I'll probably make a separate video going over that in more detail. And then the la last thing is the exit command, which basically closes any the terminal if you're running it, or Let me show you the exit command after I run another program. Let me see which one. Alright, so let me say sudo su. Let me go in as root. The su command turns you into the root user. 
now I'm the root user. Now if I wanted to exit this and go back to being the normal user, I type in exit and now I'm the normal user again. <coughs> Alright, this video is getting really long, so let's just wrap this up. To see who you are, just type in who am I? Hedia, and from my previous video, if I typed in who as root, it showed me as root. And you can also type in the date command to see the current date. And let's see. Who dash A. The who command will sh dash A will show you all users on the system, so currently it's only me. And then the uname command dash all shows you the snip all the information about the system and there are a bunch of switches but I really don't have time so I'm just gonna be really quick about this you can create aliases so this is a list of my aliases that I have to create an alias <clears throat> um, just type in alias the switch you want and then whatever switches it does and then that will change it and the last well, there's also the uh, password command, which you can use to change your password. There's also the user login one. Well, let me go over one last one I want to show you. Uh, Apropos and Vim. And this will show you all instances of Vim on your system, like all programs really with that have that string. This is very similar to the type command. It's like a combination between the type command and the locate command. But instead of showing every instance, every file or document that has the word Vim, it only shows you the programs that have the name Vim. But unlike type, it doesn't show you where they're located. Type only shows you where they are. So another one would be Apropos Brave, and it shows me my Brave browser. So that's all, all I wanted to go over today. Um, Oh, one last thing, one last thing. Uh, you can run multiple commands by using the semicolon. So if I were to use date semicolon ls semicolon who am I semicolon and echo almost done. It runs all four commands in succession. So the first command shows me the date, second one is ls, third one is who am I, Hedia, and then the last one is echo, it outputs the string I put in. So just put a semicolon between multiple commands and you can just keep using them. And you can also use shell variables. Hey, this is one last thing with echo. If you type in echo user, it will show Hedia. So this is called a shell command. There's a whole table of shell commands if you just type into Google uh, bash shell commands or Linux sh Unix shell commands. And I'll show you like, to, to use them you just type in the dollar sign and then the name of the command in all caps. So echo the main user, the current user is Hedia. Another way is echo to find out the current contents of this folder and there's nothing Wait, that's not true. That's something in here. What the fuck? Oh, I probably typed that in wrong. Oh yeah, I didn't use the dollar sign. So yeah, to find out the current uh, directory, I just have to use dollar sign pwd and shows me my uh, current directory. And one last would be echo dollar sign path. Oh sorry, in all caps. Echo dollar sign path and this shows all the paths you have on your system so anyway that's all I wanted to go over um, if there's anything I skimmed over because this video is getting long I'll probably make a separate video about it later anyways I hope you guys have a good one peace out